Okay, welcome to another edition of the Above the Bridge podcast. I'm your host, Thaddeus Park. I want to shout out our sponsors. First sponsor I want to shout out is Defend Hawaii. They have a store, Windward Mall, called No One. They have a new drops coming for summer. If you go to their website, go check out defendhawaii.com. Use promo code ATBPOD upon checkout. You'll receive 15% off your entire purchase. So go check them out. They got some new stuff out. They got some stuff for UH football. Go check them out. Go get your back to school clothes now. Go check them out. DefendHawaii.com. Next, we have IREP Detail Supply. And they're your one-stop shop for anything you need to detail your car, truck, van. They have a store in Temple Valley Shopping Center. They also have one in Las Vegas. But go check them out. IREPDetailSupply.com. Promo code ATBPOD upon checkout, and you'll receive 15% off your order. Next, we have Hawaii Candy Factory. And you see their snacks and goodies everywhere. I just went to Long's, and they had a whole big shelf of all their noms. So you see their snacks everywhere, noms. Uh, Lihimui Gushers, Lemon Peel, Peach Rings. I don't know. It, it, they have so much different stuff. They have the s'mores, and they're also a huge presence on social media. So go check them out. HawaiiCandyFactory.com. Promo code ATBPOD upon checkout, and you'll receive 10% off your purchase order. Last, we have our Medicinal Mushroom Company. There's a locally... They are a locally based medical mushroom company here in Hawaii. Um, they, right now they have extracted uh, from four different types of mushrooms. So they put it in these tinctures. So they have the um, turkey tail, chaga, lion's mane, and red reishi. And each one of these have different medicinal properties. I take them all in the morning and put it in my coffee. The red reishi I'll take right before bed and I sleep like a champ. So if you go medmushroomhigh.com and you use promo code ATBPOD upon checkout all capitals, you'll receive 45% off your first tincture of whatever mushroom you want. And go on their website. They'll explain whatever uh, medicinal properties these mushrooms have. I take it every day. Aloha. Okay, this week, my guest is somebody I was a fan of as a MMA fighter. He was pro for a while. I watched him pretty much his whole career since, what, 2006, around there, 2005? Yeah, about, about there. 2005 was my first uh, pro fight, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got Brandon Piper here. What's up? He's a MMA coach, boxing coach, promoter. What else? Father? Father, husband. Um, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, I have a construction business as well, B&B services. So I, I, I do wow. whatever it takes to, um, you know, nowadays you got to do a little bit of everything to kind of be stabilized in Hawaii, you know, with the economy being so high, the inflation. So um, I just try to dab my hands in everything. You know, whatever, if something makes money and it makes sense, shit, I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's good bro i know the feeling bro. i get like four jobs too <laughs> yeah yeah gotta, gotta, bro. Gotta. yeah so what you're done fighting like you strictly pow um competing already yeah um yeah i had a good run i mean i i'm shoot i'm 38 now i just made i made 38 this year so yeah, for me, um, I know that some some of my teammates they're still fighting. You know, some of them are older than me, some of them are same age as me, some of them been in just as long as me. But for me, um, you know, I, I I kind of accomplished everything that I set out set out to set out to when I started the sport. Um, you know, fought fought in multiple organizations, helped build some of the um, shows that's here today. Destiny, you know, um, uh, Trinity Sport. You know, I was in Destiny. I was the first. First ever, I competed in the first show in Destiny. Um, and so I, I helped some of the shows grow in Hawaii. Um, and, you know, now it's just, you know, I trying to give back. Um, and, uh, but prior to that, I mean, I fought, you know, I, I fought in uh, all over the, all over the country, all over the world. I mean, and, and fought some of the, the top guys. 
Um, fought in a second at the time was the second biggest organization. I signed a two fight um, deal with Bellator, um, and so I, I got to experience you know the, the the high levels and the ups and downs. And um, you know, for me, I said I I just wanted to compete. I want to compete with the best um and and win titles along the way and i i, I accomplished that um you know i have i had over almost 40 something professional fights um <laughs> so I, I think i yeah i think i accomplished and that's not even including my kickboxing and, and boxing <laughs> so I, I think i accomplished that um you know everything that i said i was i wanted to do for myself um and so and then another thing too is like um as i was you know competing my kids are starting to get older now um, and so it's hard, like, you know, I work, I work a nine to five job and straight from work, uh, even from lunchtime, I'll go train after done work. I go train again and I get home. It's like, you know, nine 30, 10 o'clock. And I really don't have time with the kids, you know, and I, yeah. and I, I missed a, a huge chunk of my, my older kids. Now, um, I missed, I missed a huge chunk of their life because I was pursuing a, a, a dream, you know, and, and, you know, now this time around my, my younger kids. I didn't want that to happen and so i kind of made a decision you know after after this last um my last bellator fight um i told my kids and my wife win or lose you know this is this is my last fight um i told them in a hotel i remember telling my wife um win or lose this is my last fight um and i just want you guys to know that and i'll be i'm gonna be the, the dad and husband that i should be not seeing not seeing that anyone else is different but like, and you know, the, just the financial stability, you know, we, I had to be focused with them and yeah. just be, be a present dad, you know, be there for them. I definitely understand that. And like even me with club promoting, bro, the only night I, I promote is the night my daughter's at her mom's house. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I, I understand it's like sometimes you got to stop what you're doing, take a step back and okay, rearrange everything and. Cause honestly, like my kid, she don't give two shits how many bottles I sell at the club. She doesn't care if district is packed. <laughs> she she care if I'm home cruising with her. You know what I mean? Like, but um, yeah, yeah. can find ways to make means and to make it work. You know what I mean? I I watched yeah. you compete from such a early age. How old were you when you first started fighting? What is that? Sorry, he's breaking up. Honors. How how old were you when you first started fighting? Um, so I actually started when I was young. Um, you know, I was I was into uh I was doing wrestling and then I started we me and Bronson started actually fighting. Our first fight was was sixteen. Sixteen was our first fight. <laughs> um but we was training, we was training for a minute, then um was training with we started out in Maui actually with um this fight club was called Evolution Fight Club at the time was with Ernest Kekino and Tyson Nahoi Kaika, the two brothers. And that's kind of where it took off. The MMA journey took off in Maui. Um, you know, I fought in Nante shows. Nante is a boxing coach still. Jeff McKee shows. Um, Ira Hokano shows. Warriors Quest. And so, oh. you know, fighting over there. That's when, that's when still Kendall Grove was still fighting. That's before yeah. the first MMA fighter that he went. And um, you know, I started in that show. Won, won a few titles there. And then just kind of branched off, came back home to Oahu and then, um, and just started off. I, I we started with uh hard knocks out in, out in Waianae and that was with, uh, not so much people know, but that was with, um, that was in Ross, had Ross, we had Kalahos, uh, we had, uh, oh. our coaches was Raymond Kwan and Johan Ohano, um, PJ Dean was there, Richard Desforge, uh, who was with Devin Chong, Bronson, me, we had David, uh, David Balikal, we had Brandon Absher, some of the older guys that not so much people really know about, but uh, was making waves. And, and that was still at the time when it was uh, super broad, transitioning into icon sport. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that was the days. And then, uh, yeah, and then we just kind of took it from there. Uh, Bronson won the state title, um, the icon sport state title, 10 to 1 underdog uh, beat. It's so funny because he, he, he beat Ch Chico Canaveros and Chico Canaveros was the state champ for a long time, the icon sport. And now Chico's, we, now we all friends. Like we, we, he's a, he's part of our coaching staff at HR, Rick and Hannah, his son trains with us. So it's a full circle. So we kind of oh, wow. joke around about it now, you know, like we're all old now we joke around it, but, but yeah, man, it's just, it's a full circle. And, uh, from hard knocks, we went to, we kind of, the gym kind of shut down. 
um, Ross was kind of taking a break. And so we, we transitioned to GC's Lord Gym with um, oh, David wow. Patel, um, Bob Ostovich, and the rest of the guys over there. And uh, we was there for, I don't know, a few few years. And then GC Lord kind of shut down because the gym, um, you know, they had to close his doors. And then right next door was 808 Pipe Factory. So <laughs> we went over to 808 Pipe Factory, Uncle, Auntie Kim, Uncle Ron, Nico, um, Harris, you know, all the, all the guys. And then pretty much that's kind of how um everything kind of took off from there um our my professional fight journey kind of took off from there i mean anti came and uncle ron was great um great coaches great mentors and um and with and kai kamaka and, and we kind of just took off from there and then we just you know with, with them their whole mentality was if it wasn't in a gym training they wouldn't get us fights you know so you have to be in a gym training back then uh, and we fight anybody, any place, anywhere, anytime. If we're in the gym, at the camp, we'll be like, boy, you fighting next week. Okay. <laughs> we don't even ask who. We like, she just tell us, hey, boy, you fighting next week. We say, okay. Okay. So we start, <laughs> you know, start doing our rounds, whatever. But we was always in shape, you know. And so um, that was kind of the motive back then. And that's why, like, a lot of us, like myself, um, Harris, a lot of us, you know, early on in our career, we wanted to be, be the best. So we fought the best, you know. And, and, in prematurely nowadays you look back at it we might not have been ready back then but back then we, we had something to prove you know and we wanted to yeah. to fight the best and so that's why we racked up you know some so a few losses and stuff but it was great experience for me it was like shoot i i, I knew in my heart that I, I i trained with the best and i'm not gonna see anybody in the in the cage that i never seen in the gym you know so yeah it's kind of the kind of the like a nutshell um and then from there like i took a long hiatus i mean i i kind of took i think it was like five years off five years uh then came back i went back with charles keep lee at hawaii lead mma and then shoot i just i actually went back over there to lose weight because i was freaking 220 pounds and, <laughs> yeah you fight 145 45 55 and i was 220 pounds <laughs> Oh, yeah, and, that's nuts. And so, it's fucking crazy. And so, oh, I don't know if I can swear. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I can, bro. <laughs> Trust me. Yo, all good, bro. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, so I went back to the gym just to lose weight. Me and my wife went back just to start training and start, start, you know, getting back in shape and start being healthy again. Then I was dropping all this weight and I was like, Charles was like, oh, you might as well fight. I said, nah, kind of, kind of old already. I don't know if I still got it. And he's like, jump in a fight class. We go, jump in a fight class and see. We'll do some sparring and see. And so did some sparring. And I was like, holy shit, I still can move. Holy shit, I still can compete. Holy <laughs> shit. So I was like, fight. <laughs> <laughs> you had the bug out. Huh? So, yeah, I got the bug. And then that was it. You know, from there, uh, in 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 one year or year and a half, I went, I had four fights in a year and a half. Went on four fight winning streak. Um Four out of, three out of four opponents that I won, I knocked out, and and the last guy I submitted. So I was on one 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 terror coming back, and and honestly, it was a lot to do with my 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 mentality. Like I was I was more settled in life. Um, wasn't having financial hardships. You know, I, I had financial freedom now, so I could train. I could I could do all this, but and so that kind of played a big factor. They say um, what we like to say is carrying luggage into the ring, yeah. Oh. And um, that's part of that carrying luggage is like my personal life outside of my life. I was going through a lot of shit outside, um, you know, going through a divorce, you know, finding finding my my wife now, and and so um, she kind of she kind of the one that kind of transitioned me mentality my the, the way I am now, and so I owe a lot to her, you know, and um, I am kind of who I am today it is a lot to do with her, so. Um, you know, big shout out to my wife. Um, but, but yeah, man, that's fuck. I get, I can so much stories about. I, I've been in the game so long, so it's. Oh like, yeah. I'm trying back to just. Like, <laughs> back in the day, like I, I remember, like I always see Harrison. I'm like, bro, they, they, they don't make it like that no more. Like the yeah. um, he would fight. I swear, it was like every other weekend, I would see him fighting somewhere. You guys too, Ooh. like would fight like random kind stuffs too. I huh? like. Yeah, Somebody no. putting on one show at Doe Cannery and get Icon and then get some yeah. other show down at Philcom. It's like, bro, you guys just fought the other week. Like, yeah, yeah, nobody we, does that. And, and <laughs> nobody, so the only 808 fight factor does that. And that's why Harris has <laughs> like 100 something fights, bro. Oh, guarantee. 
Yeah, out of all his MMA, his boxing, kickboxing, that guy get over 100 fights. And um, yeah, man, it's just 808 fight factory. That's why Uncle Ron get planning fights. So like Nico get planning fights. Yeah. Um, Bryson Kamaka had planning fights. That's because they, they, we was always in the gym and we, Anthony Kim was like, like I said, you fighting next week? Shoot. You fighting Friday? Shoot. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it was good times, man. Good times. I definitely, uh, definitely miss it at times, but. You know, at times I, I, I miss. I, I like eating too. So, I, <laughs> <laughs> right, you gotta get I, that much bigger, dude. That's a that's some that's luggage, bro. Two hundred oh, twenty. <laughs> yeah, so, so I mean, even recently, I so I I still kind of dieting. I got kind of heavy again, but I'm back down. Like I, I at least I'm under. I'm I'm in the one nine like eighty nine ninety. So I'm kind of kind of fluctuating. My target weight is one seventy five. So I'm not too far off. Um, just gotta you know, live a cleaner, healthy lifestyle. So I can be around for my kids. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling, right? The older we get, the the oh. more things don't work as easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's harder to shake. I don't know. You get yeah. older, like, damn. Or you drink one six pack and the whole the next day is hurting and you could just drink 12 <laughs> before and it's all good the next day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tell you, if I do a hard night, you go out party on hard night, which I don't ever do anymore because, you know, I, we, we busy seven days a week. But <laughs> if I do drink a lot, oh, it take me like two, three days to recover. Like, God damn, and I remember being yeah. at this point. <laughs> need <an> IV. <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> Yo. So yeah. in your opinion, how has the MMA scene changed in Hawaii since from when you were fighting to how it is now? And Brad, these kids got it. Got it pretty good compared to how you guys did. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, shocks. Like, people nowadays, like, like what it is nowadays is, like, people train, kids train from little kids. Like, if they know they're going to fight MMA. They're going to do wrestling, jiu-jitsu, all at one young age, boxing, kickboxing. And then when they turn 18, they freaking phenoms already. You know what I mean? Like, like look at Kai Boy, Kai Boy and Tristan. Those kids been training in the gym from five, yeah. six years old. Look at them now. Like look at look at when they compete, how high level they are. So you see the difference, yeah. Like Kai Kai Senior had those kids training from when they were young, knowing that they was gonna fight in MMA. And so, um, you know, same with Ray Cooper, Brown Boy them, like they've been resting their whole life, you know, they've been boxing. So like when they when they turned 18, they knew that's what they was gonna do already. So they phenoms already, like, but a lot of back then it was like Ah, these guys like ah, these guys eighteen. Ah, we go try MMA, you know, like, and yeah. these guys only street fight. Now they gotta learn jujitsu. They gotta learn boxing. They gotta learn kickboxing. They gotta learn diet. They gotta learn discipline. So, um, in in a sense like that, nowadays the kids are grooming into becoming MMA fighters. And back then, the talent that it had back then surpasses. I mean, the talent now surpasses way than what it was back then. So, but on the flip side to that is that. You get guys picking and choosing fights now. You get guys, it's becoming a business. They're going to fight 10 lemons for get one 10 and 0 record versus yeah. this guy at our gym going to fight 10 hammers. But you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, it's the kind of give and take like that. But I understand it's a business point now. And, and that's what, you know, that's what was lacking back then. It wasn't so much business. It was uh, it's for the love of the sport, you know? Yeah. Plus two, what's good now is um, all you guys that are coaching – live through it you guys had like older mentors like ron them and and now you guys went through the circle and now you guys can help teach these kids and the technology is better like for for fighting they get so much like for cut weight i remember for us we used to stuff our cheek with lihimui and spit in the sauna with yeah. a trash bag <laughs> These guys get all kind like hydration stuff and like oh crazy scientific ways for do it and it's like yeah God, it's it's cool to see but it's like oh a little bit jealous huh <laughs> yeah yeah no, it's so funny you said that because I exactly what you said fully moist seed put gum inside for spit trash bag <laughs> with the sauna and so when I came back fighting that's the only thing that's how I knew like when I came back this last time in 20, uh, seven, 2016, 2017, Came back to fight. I was like, can't cut weight. I'm gonna just do them like that. So I did that for the first two fights, right? Kill myself, spit, all that stuff, sauna. And then um I met up with uh she uh Swain Lunasco, his he, he's one of my teammates, his dad, Shane Lunasco, his Luna Sport Combat. 
He was like, oh, no, you're doing them all wrong. Hey. So he sent me this. I had to take one picture of myself without my shirt. He would, he would scientifically make this whole program on my meals, how I how I going to diet. Yeah, and then fight week, I'll be like, hey, Shane, I stayed, I stayed 12 pounds over. He go, ah, cherry, that's gravy, that easy, that. I'd be like, oh, 12 pounds, that's plenty, bro. He go, no, all right, just eat. What I tell you for eat, just eat them. So he would make my meals. And then um, for the day of the weigh-in, I would go to his house or wherever we at, hotel, we would cut weight. And he would, like, it's signed, like, he would... Make this hot water, measure the temperature, go inside the inside the hot water, get out, go inside my mommy blanket, wrap myself up, go back inside the tub, and I would lose weight like this. And so it was like all scientific. And then after that, I would lose all that weight. After that, he'd be like, um, he would make this hydration drinks that I got like three drinks. I gotta drink them and I get half an hour break, drink the next one, half an hour break, drink the next one. And so it's like one whole scientific thing. And when I took that, when I did that recovery and that whole meal plan and stuff with him, I felt the best I ever felt. Like I was like, wow. it was crazy. It improved my cardio. This, it was so crazy. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like people that, that in the fight game now, they know what I'm talking about. Everybody does that. Um, and so, yeah, man, it's, it's a game changer for real, for real. Luna oh, Sparks. That's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's crazy bro but, yeah crazy. i seen like russell guys carrying a uh, distilled water and like what is that for? water loading it, water loading yeah. yeah you take all the salt out of my body and then when i uh, <laughs> wait i was like what the hell <laughs> yeah. that's, that's quite weak quite weak you water load yeah. like <laughs> crazy bro i remember back in the day bro these guys came all came my house after they didn't weigh in and i was sticking them with the ivs just hanging them on the curtain. <laughs> That's back in the day. No, you don't need to yeah. do that because hydration is so good now. You don't need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you power fighting, but you're still in the game. How are you still in the um boxing and fight game right now? Um, so yeah, so I kind of uh so I was actually um partnering with with Ryan um with Destiny and May. I was I I did a few events with him. Um, at the, uh, what is that? We did them at the Kamhoi Convention Center. Yeah, yeah, I went to them. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. I, I did a few of them. And then, uh, yeah, I just was like, just because, you know, I, I know the fighters. I know I know what they've been through. Um, and I have a lot of uh, connection with the coaches. You know, it's, it's the same guys that I've been around. So it's easy to connect with them. Some of these guys, like, I know what they're going through. So, like, you know, like, I've been I've been in their shoes. I know I know the weak cut. I know... I know how it is in fight camp. I know fight week. So for me, it's kind of easy with easy with that. Um, and then, you know, just this last this last event, I never really, I never really helped, uh, did too much of this last event because I started focusing on the boxing side. Um, and, and I'm not saying that I don't I have no passion for MMA anymore, but for me, like seeing, because I would kids, I would box the boxing kids, the HR boxing kids every day. For me, the, the passion was with, the boxing and so um you know i was doing i was i was doing a little bit with with my brother at rising kings always doing kickboxing smokers and stuff and and then we kind of um you know rick and hannah had asked hey you know they wanted to partner up and 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 do on uh do throw some boxing events and so being a i get the experience with, with promoting and stuff and i know all the ins and outs and so now we team now we teamed up you know um me ricky hannah um we team up and now it's called rising kings and queens boxing and 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 honestly like the production you know that we put on is like i do it we, we do it in a way that i would i would want as a kid i like i like feeling oh, yeah. big like fighting like you know big show i like see the lights the smoke the fireworks all that stuff so <laughs> yeah our production is um is is like that we, we you know we try to put it on as as if they're fighting at the police though you know give them the whole vibe that whole walkout music um, with oh, the fire coming out, the smoke, all that stuff, and so you know that's kind of our, it's kind of our, um, our vision uh, with that. Um, something that, something that we kind of started, um, you know, was doing the field calm smokers and stuff, and yeah, now it's just transitioning. I mean, these kids are, uh, the kids that we have or that Hawaii has produced. I mean, fuck, it's it's incredible, man. Like we went up to, we just went up to. Uh, well, we went to uh, not which yeah, Wichita, Kansas, this past Junior Olympics, and oh. 
Just the Hawaii. Wait, wait, ho- before you say anything, that place sucks. Huh? I was there last year for graduation. Oh, bro, they don't even have a hill. Nothing. Like, it's flat, bro. It's, but, yeah. Bro, it's, <laughs> and, and in Wichita, I mean, it, that era we was in, in the town, the, the metro era, it was like fucking ghetto, bro. Yeah. Like, super ghetto. <laughs> we, went, we went to freaking, um, one of these days, uh, one one day after a fight, we all split up and we we drove down to um, my wife wanted to eat Taco Bell, so we drove like five minutes away from the arena, and I was driving down looking like this. I said, "Fuck Taco Bell, I don't know if I like stop over here. It's fucking, it's fucking <laughs> ghetto, bro." Yeah, <laughs> like ah, fuck it, turn inside, we go inside, sit down inside, and I was like ordering food, and then I sitting down inside, and all okay, kind fucking homeless people coming inside, and I'm like. <laughs> Holy fuck, this is ghetto, bro. Yeah. But I was like, yeah, fuck that place. That place is like, yeah. yeah. That place would trip me out, bro. Like, just driving around, the, the, it's flat, bro. Flat. Flat. Floating <laughs> everywhere, but just flat. Yo, yeah. You know if you see yeah, a mountain it, or, or fucking yo, nothing. The, what is that? The, 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 hair, the, the bells of hay, yeah, and the open yo. field all over the place. <laughs> Yeah, that fucking Sorry for interrupt, but I was the no, no, no. The yeah, one no, thing yeah. I, not many people I know went there, so I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that place sucks, bro. <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 so like seeing the fucking seeing the um the kids from Hawaii. I mean, like Hawaii is so small compared to all these big states, Texas, California, and from our gym alone, we had three gold medals. We had three gold medals, wow. two silver medals, um one bronze and yeah so we had we had eight eight kids go up six of them win 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 medal so i mean and then and then on top of that we had west side striking they had three gold medals so hawaii alone went killed a whole everybody up there and so it's kind of unforgiving now like all the kids go to the national level they kind of like they kind of just smash i mean like like it's hard it's crazy because these kids get like 50 60 70 fights our kids get like 10 12 15 fights because no more fights huh yeah and so like and then going up there and just smashing all these guys you know like um shit like the patricio they get so much national champs they, their kids um alexis and angelique them them two alone get 12 national titles of six apiece wow. you know what i mean brazen tadaki or not a kid that trains in um, braxton uh, four-time national champ. You get the Soulful Brothers, three-time national champs. Eat. Um, yeah, I mean the list goes on. Braxton had he in, he in silver medal his first national, and then he would win um, third place this last one. So that's your it, son, my, huh? My son, yeah. And so yeah. I mean, I mean it is what it is. But I thought he could have won both of the tournaments. But I, that's just sometimes me being biased. Huh? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so I've been noticing now though. Hawaii boxing is kind of taking off, kind of, kind of got super popular in the last couple of years. And yeah. I know Nito, and I just had the Manavai boxing guy coach Ryan. on. Yeah, I had him on yeah. last week, and it just seems like a lot of ki- a lot more kids are gravitating towards boxing, especially yeah. at one young age. And that's one good skill to learn. But it's it's kind of getting bigger now, huh? Yeah, I think. Uh- Honestly, like, you know, this is my just opinion. I think that, like, the pause, Jake Paul and Logan Paul really went turned the market on this boxing thing. Like, the, the YouTube guys, boxing, never did boxing in life, coming and making big waves, and and then them showing how much money you can make boxing. I think when kind of draw, like, I mean, that's just my opinion. I mean, of course, of course, people, like, they love boxing. They see the, what is what it's doing now and stuff, but... Honestly, I think that was on like a big thing. Like, um, I remember the USA Boxing headquarters seeing that there was more boxing memberships in the last two years or three years than wow. than there ever was in ever. <laughs> so, I mean, I I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, seeing these wow. guys like these YouTube guys becoming famous off boxing. Um, I think you know kids see that and they everybody all these kids they're on YouTube nowadays. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. That's kind of yeah. YouTube so. They see that kind of stuff and they think, oh, I can try, you know, and they fall in love with it, you know. <laughs> I never once thought of that, bro. I was thinking like, wow, I, plan- I, I see it on Instagram, like planning local kids and planning gyms are popping up and I see all this. I, I never did think of that ever, bro. Wow. That makes total sense because it's mainstream already. It's like mainstream. culture already. Yeah, oh, That yeah. makes sense, bro. I, I, <laughs> Logan Paul, like. 
kind of stand those guys. Well, I like oh, the Jake. I like Logan Paul. I don't like the other guy. Yeah, Jake. Jake yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, yeah. I, I watched those because I like seeing him get knocked out and he oh, yeah. winning, so see, bro. <laughs> see, look, he get the fans that the fans that like them oh. and the fans that hate them like me. I gonna follow him too because I like seeing fucking somebody beat him. Yeah, I like, gonna fucking tune in because I like watch. And now you get both sides. You get yeah. guys like him and hate him tuning in. So fuck, they make more money. <laughs> And you know he's I mean? fighting some ringers too. Like he's fighting guys, I think, would murk him and he he knock him out. Like bruh, I thought Anderson was gonna beat him. I, I thought I, I thought Woodley was gonna bruh, and he flatlined him. I was like, bruh. I know. It's yeah. like who who is bruh. it gonna take, bruh? Twice I thought twice I thought that too. I was like thinking the same thing he did. I was like, bruh, there's no way he beat Anderson. Even he old, <laughs> no way he yeah. beat Woodley, even though he old, like then <laughs> just chomping him down, but yeah, him is strategic too. Uh, like he, he know what he, they know what they're doing. They fighting, they fighting guys way out of their prime. Um, yeah. building names off of them, building their their records, and then the more and more they fight, the bigger the money will come. You know, so yeah, it's smart. You know, smart. And and look at him, MVP promotions now is one of the one of the biggest boxing promotions now. So I mean, shit, like you know, he's, he's doing working. Doing, he's working, man. <laughs> that's crazy that that makes so so much sense why boxing and it, and like you said it's all over united states so all it, over united states yeah that's right oh that i guess that's <laughs> i guess that's a that's good thing my, for these kids everybody huh? get their own opinion but i i think that's just that's just my opinion why boxing not only in hawaii but in in the in the nation in the world why it's getting so big is because guys like that you know guys like that like jake the, the paul brothers that kind of opening up the doors for these outsiders that never did boxing in life, but they're going to try them because yeah. if they can do it, why can't I, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so. But even these YouTuber guys, like even like Ryan Garcia and um, all these Tank Davis, they all have a personality on social media. And mm-hmm. I think the more kids are seeing it and they like the flashiness and then, oh yeah, I'm going to try that. That, that, Makes total sense. Yeah, that's but that guy Ryan was all bust up, bro. Uh, my ties. He was with, Yeah, he was at, like maybe like a couple weeks ago, and he, yeah, was, he was. He was with the kind. He was with no other Hoppa. man. Oh, he's with Hoppa, Hoppa boy. DJ. Yeah, oh, he took a picture of him. I'm like, bro, that guy looked like he's trying for chew his ear, bro. I was like, oh, he's not. Yo, he's not just, uh, yeah, he's just not drunk, bro. He's on something else, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guarantee, guarantee. Yeah, that guy yeah. is, yeah. Out but, of control. Yeah, even, even when he fought Haney, I was like, this guy is gone. But he was fucking trolling everybody the whole time, making them think yeah. that he's crazy, making them think that he's not training. <laughs> and he had one of the best training camps he ever had, and he was smashing me. I so, I will, he, I lost money on that one. <laughs> I honestly thought Haney was yeah. gonna smash him, bro. I thought Haney was gonna gonna murk him. Yeah. yeah, and then and then I was like, no way, Garcia. Like, but I mean, shit, he 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 fool everybody, bro. He troll everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I think Haney was the most surprised. <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck? Yeah, what the hell just happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But transitioning into coaching how has that been for you for boxing especially coaching your kid bro that must feel different huh um <laughs> yeah i mean transitioning to coaching i mean i, I kind of always was kind of coaching but i mean for the boxing side it's um for coaching my son there's only so much like like i i always gonna look out for the best interest of him that's my son obviously and um, but sometimes it gets hard, like, like as on, as the coaches at our coaches at our gym, you know, um, I kind of like, it's easier to coach other kids. Like I can coach them and they listen. They, they, they're very receptive. Um, a lot of them know that I've been in there. So, that, so like, you know, when you get that respect that they know, I know, they know that I know what I'm talking about. The respect is, is a little bit better. Um, and for my son, like he, he'll listen, but he always get like something for say, you know, like he always would be like, <laughs> Oh, but dad, oh, but what if I do this? Like, you know, instead of being like, no, son, just do this. What I told you, he always will get something for saying that, that. That's normal. <laughs> All of our kids that that trains, um, they're the same way. You know, they're going to always question their dad and their parents. Um, but I leave it to Ricky and Hannah. You know, Ricky and Hannah, um, Braxton and all the kids, you know, they respect them. Um, they're very um, respectable people in the boxing community. So 
um, everyone, you know, Braxton really respects them, and and honestly, they they um, they're the ones who kind of kind of built him, built my son, and and you know, make him make him who, who he is today, and, and with all the kids, you know, um, the proof is in the pudding, you know, what I mean, our gym that you know, HR Boxing has multiple multiple national champs in the gym. I believe wholeheartedly we are the best boxing gym, um, you know, in, in the state. That's just me, my my opinion. Um, not only because the athletes, not only because we get good athletes over there, it's because we, we're family oriented. It's, it's real family based. Um, you know, everybody, there's no ego trips over there. Everybody's, you know, one family. And, and I, I think that's what draws in a lot of people as well. They see that we're very family oriented. Nobody is, nobody's better than nobody over there. Everybody gets treat, treated equally. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's part of their, um, their mission over there. And, and that's why, um, you know, that's why to me that that's Ricky and Hannah's gym is to me the best. But, you know, to answer your question about the coaching, you know, I love it. I mean, this is this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I always going to be a part of the sport um, to the day I die. I mean, as long as my son um, is committed, which he already told me he, you know, he's 10 years old now. Um, when he's 17, 18 years old, you know, if, if the Olympics is not close by, then um we're gonna turn pro so that's what that's his dream that's what he wants to do and so looks like i'm in it for the long the long haul you know <laughs> but you know he doesn't want to try mma like he's he's you know like loving a boxing he used to actually he was pretty good in jiu-jitsu you know he was he was in jiu-jitsu we, had, we went um with tammy and desi then with desi minor um mm -hmm. and uh he loved it but we kind of left the gym i i i stopped training over there i, I was just started transitioning to boxing so we never went back to Hawaii elite so it's, it's been a minute since I went back there but um he loves boxing and he you know he told me if he if he had his way he would he, you know he would quit school and just box I told him no you're not gonna be on <laughs> you cannot be on TV and not know how for talk and read come on bro you gotta have some kind of knowledge of skills you yeah. know what I mean so, yeah that's the goal man and, and that's the goal I plan to be coaching and I love it and yeah how is it for you coaching kids versus coaching fighters, especially you as coaching pros, but like when you're training at Hawaii lead yeah. and stuff like that? Um, sure. That's an actually a really good question because honestly, like I think kids is a lot more easier to coach, very more receptive. Um, and with adults, it's like, fuck it. Like, Man, they, yeah, 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 they squat and you coach enough for do something, they're going to do the total opposite. I'm like, bro, I, I just told you, like, you never hear me just say, like, what, what, what told you for that? Or it'd be like, <laughs> no, I never hear, but I'm freaking yelling, coaching you from the cage, yelling at you, like, come on, tune me over here. <laughs> so, like, and with the kids, it's different because, like, no matter how tired they are, like, if we're coaching them from the outside of the ring, we tell them for do something, nine out of ten kids going to do them like this. Like, we tell them, hey, chon jab, chon one, two gonna be like this when I don't you tell them get a jab throw the jab take the jab throw the overhand like <laughs> they're not gonna get it they're gonna be like ah oh, nah not gonna do them you know or they're gonna do them like way later you know so like <laughs> the coaching aspect part I think is a lot more easy uh, easier for instruction wise but as far as discipline wise yeah the adults is a lot easier they, they're gonna be more disciplined the weight you know weight cutting and stuff kids the boxing is every five every five um five pounds so every five pounds there's a weight class and that encourages oh, wow. the kids to not um not cut so much weight when they're fighting they can fight what they walk around at and not have to do drastic weight cuts like the pros you know they do 10 15 20 pound weight cuts like me i was doing 15 20 pound weight cuts you know what i mean so yeah, yeah i mean you always like, get every advantage you can get but you also get 24 hours for hydrate whereas amateurs you get on you know more 24 hours you weigh in the morning and you fight in the night Oh. So, so you weigh in at seven o'clock, like the nationals. You weigh in at seven a.m. Fight first fight is at 12, 12 p.m. 12, 12, 12 noon is the first fight, and then they take on break at six uh, five p.m. Come back at six p.m. for the usually like the older kids. Oh. So I mean, you fight the same day. So like our shows down here, same thing. Weigh in in the morning, like our show this Saturday. Weigh in at seven a.m. and then fight, you know, three p.m. So. And then what um, they get like brackets where they gotta fight multiple times. 
um no so the brackets is like tournament style like um mm -hmm. like when we went to the nationals or like we get this tournament coming up in october the pound nationals um it's bracket style so single elimination uh, um for a local event it's just one fight like you match up two weight two weight guy two guys same weight same age same experience match up oh, so that's how, it, that's how it will now Oh, so it's like on like for real kind of show, and they you get all the lights and all that stuff. Yeah, for real. Yeah, it's like like oh, that's we're the cool. only boxing show in in um. I won't put this on record because I I know everybody gonna be trying to. I mean, that's good. Honestly, I like all this for the kids, but yeah, our show is like I run them like I running I'll run Destiny. You know, I we gonna yeah. do the full lighting package, the full walkout. Get the freaking smoke coming out. Get the the, the fireworks. The, the fire sprinklers coming out. Yeah. Um. The food. The food. Nine yards. I like them experience the food thing. Like, I step out. Like I said earlier, I step myself out the box. And what a what would I want? What would I want when I fighting? I like all the bright lights. I like all the smoke. I like the walkout yeah. song. I like come out <laughs> jamming. You know what I mean? Get in the zone. Yeah. So. Give that to the kids. You know why not? You know that's cool, bro. Yeah. So yeah. they 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 just putting on a show they're, they're fighting one dude and they come like it like it's huh. a professional event then it's just yeah. kids oh kids. that's sick <laughs> bro. that's freaking cool they must yeah. love that those kids must feel pumped that huh? where yeah, do you guys yeah. do it at um so um this is our third show now the hr austin hr third show um we're doing them so why not why not district gym so it's uh it's kind of on big i don't know you remember you ever you remember those shows that uh in Maui, the uh, War Memorial Stadium. Yes, been I've been there. Yeah, yeah, remember those shows? Oh, wait, so it's lock, lockdown in Paradise, or one of those ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. that it's it's like that same setup, like that same thing, like the the gym style, like that. So, but we make on you know we make make do it all we can, and uh, we're planning on doing um some big shows coming up. We get some some stuff in the works that's coming up for the end of the year. Hopefully, we get um uh some some place in Waikiki. We plan on doing one our hotel. Oh, uh, I'm not gonna release the, the name yet, but yeah, we're gonna be yeah. on ballroom in a hotel. Um, so we're waiting on that for get locked in. Once we get that that locked in, the dates locked in, and I can I gonna release. But yeah, that gonna be on our end of the year kind of end of the year bang. We're doing we're doing big big production with that one. So oh wow, the, these kids getting um special treatment, right? It, them, it, honestly, that'll get them used to all the bright lights and stuff like that, and. When they go nationals, it's it's not gonna be such a shell shell shock, you know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah, that's right. Actually, um, yeah, they they gonna be used to all that that bright lights and stuff, and and uh, not gonna be nothing new to them, you know. And, and uh, yeah, I never thought of it like that. I just thought of it like I like them feel what we feel, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I was, I was watching videos of your son and bro, he's, he's, his hands are quick and he, way he moves is real smooth. Yeah. How, how nervous you get when you watching him fight? Cause I know you can't control it, bro. Like, like when oh. you in the ring, you can control whatever you are doing. But when your son's out there, it's like, oh no, that must be way Holy more nuts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's on oh, whole man. I, like, honestly, like. I know my son, like, I know what he can do. I know, I know, you know, I know he's, you know, he's one of the elite guys in his weight. Um, I know he can hang with anybody. He trained with the three best guys um, nationally in our gym. So, but honestly, when he fights, I'm like, <laughs> I get so nervous. Like, bro, I, I, it's worse than when I fight. Like, when I fight, I'm nervous. Like, my mouth come dry a little bit and I got to put water. And like, I, I mean, that's normal, right? But when my son fight, like, Oh, I say not back. I say like, maybe warm up yet. I just we just got to the back, so I warm up. Like I sitting down, I sweating already. <laughs> hard racing. I'm like warming up. I say like like breathing hard. Like it's right. It's like I don't know. It's hard to explain. If 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 you if you're a parent that your kid competing on combat sport, then you kind of know the feeling. Like, bro, and then even all the way up to the ring, I'm like I look at him like, Max, you okay? Good. That guy like good. And he's like looking at me like. Yeah, good. Like this is not a big, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, good. So I'm like, okay, hug me then. Hug me if you're good. So I say hugging him. I hug him. And then he he just standing straight like this with his arms straight down like this. 
it's like Shane Brown. I'm like, oh, me, oh, me, you see. <laughs> and then he just turned his head like that. And I'm like, fucking, like, you know, this, like, I, like, you know, that's the feeling that like, I love him. And I like, I like, you know, show that compassion. But at the same time, like, I cannot, like you said, I cannot control what happened in the ring. When I was fighting, I could control that. And, and with him, it's like, Something can happen. It's, I mean, it's a hurt sport. Anything can happen, right? And yeah, for me, like seeing that. But then once the bell ring and I see him catch him a couple of times, I'm like, Ooh, good, <laughs> late work. <Yeah. laughs> and now we, now we stay, now we stay, like you know, you know, fight, and now I stay coaching, and things yeah. come out. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, this this last um this last event in Wichita was kind of was kind of an eye eye opener for me. Um, you know, he won his first two fights. Uh, you know, kind of easy, and then the third fight was some kind of was some kind of tough match, and the kid was running around, and you know, point just trying. He basically threw like eight punches the whole fight, but running around the whole the whole thing, and then you know, Brax was getting frustrated, and then I was getting frustrated because, like, honestly, like I never know how for coach that style. Like, I never know for coach. I know for coach somebody they boxing. I know for coach that. But I never yeah. know if a coach on style where somebody just running around the ring, stop, go throw one punch, run around the ring, stop, throw one punch. You know what I mean? Like, we yeah. never teach him. We don't teach him that kind of style. So for for me, it was a real eye opener. Um, you know, a lot of things that I recall. And and honestly, like his uncle and auntie, they wasn't they wasn't there at the oh they was there at the time, but no, they wasn't there yet. Oh, they was there, but they couldn't get their credentials to come in and corner at the time yet. Oh. So they came because they came in too late. So they, they was outside on the on the, the corner, and I felt so bad because, you know, like the kids work so hard. He works so hard to get where he's at, and 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 for me, like I felt like I let him down because I couldn't coach him to to what I knew he should have been in winning. Like if his if his um auntie or uncle was Rick or Hannah was coaching him, I'm I'm sure it would have been a different outcome. But so for me, like it was kind of like. I felt I felt let down. I felt I let my son down, but that's part of the coaching, you know. Like, yeah, um, I gotta reevaluate that kind. At least we seen that kind of style now, and I can kind of kind of coach if if I gotta coach him like that now. And so, um, but yeah, to your point, I mean, yeah, it can be very very like good <laughs> and bad, bro. Like, holy shit, yeah, <laughs> the nerves. You know, you start questioning yourself if you're doing a good job. You start, you know, like. This and that, like I like what I was seeing, I, you know, like if Rick and Hannah was there, it might have been different. I mean, you know, like the outcome might have been different. I'm sure it what it would have been because I was he was fighting with me, fighting with the guy, fighting with the ref, fighting with three <laughs> different guys, you know. So yeah, yeah, and in in you know, in all in all aspects, it's like that was a real eye opener for me. And and um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's hard, bro. Go to your kid. <laughs> Well, that that takes a, a humble man f- to realize that, and say, bro, I, I messed up as a coach, or I didn't know how to figure that out. But mm-hmm. you you're already thinking like, okay, now I can learn that. I know how what I can do to adapt his style to someone fighting like that. And bro, yeah. I, I, that's that's the end of the day. What they say, you either win or you learning, and that oh, yeah. that's that's where you grow as a as a parent and also a coach and for your son he gonna grow watching you grow so i think that that's that's cool that it happened maybe not in that moment but the way you are transitioning it to a coaching aspect that's that's pretty smart bro yeah sorry i didn't drop my wallet (laughs) (laughs) so yeah yeah, i agree with that i mean that's that's what it is bro like Learning, bro. Learning, learning. I, I learning as I go. I like, you know, I always learning every single day from, from, uh, from these kids. I mean, like, every <laughs> single one of them, they get their own personality, they get their own strengths, their own weaknesses. So, I mean, I learning, I growing with them, you know, at the same time, and I, I giving back my knowledge, um, learning, pick, you know, teaching them what I learned over the years, and and from what I learned with from Ricky. Ricky was actually my boxing coach, and I was fighting too. I mean, when I was knocking guys out. Rick was the Rick was the guy. My boy Rick was my. I mean, Charles was my head coach, but Rick was the guy that you know I give a lot. I owe him a lot of uh, respect because I mean, when I was when he was training me, and I, I I never felt so confident in my life, in my hands, in my boxing, and and it showed. It showed in the ring. I mean, I was cleaning guys out, you know, and so yeah, you know, so the proof is in the pudding now, you know. 
Yep, he- guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to see you transition into a coach because I seen you fight for a long time and boy, you had that energy, bro. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I guns blazing every time. Yeah. Right? I come in out <laughs> guns blazing. That's my. That's the way I fight. That's the way I train, and that's how it. That's why. That's how it was. The guys used to hate sparring at me because I every time I sparring, I'm like, Charles used to stop. What the fuck you guys doing? Trying to knock him out. In my head, I'm thinking, yeah. That's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> fucking tone it down. He used to be like yelling, sir. Tone it down. What are you doing? Yeah, Charles, you get hurt before the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah Charles. Sorry. Fucking freaking guys like shaking his head and I, in my head I think he's fuck yeah I trying to think this guy's head out this guy trying to think my head out but that's how I fight I I I on aggressive fight I come out swinging that's how I fight you know and <laughs> just, that's funny bro yeah yeah I if trip you know, how you know, bro, you know, oh, you know yeah how that guy is bro <laughs> yeah he's he's different yeah I miss yeah. that guy bro. I never see him long time <laughs> the um when you were talking about teaching uh coaching kids versus adults i totally it resonated with me because i i used to teach uh taekwondo Mm -hmm. and you teach a little kid they are like one sponge and they aren't afraid to try Mm -hmm. i would hate teaching adults because they give you 21 reasons why they cannot so it's like you tell them show them one kick the kid's gonna try fall on the ground try try again keep going Adults is like, oh, I hurt my ankle the other day. I, it's just, I, I rather just train the kids, brother. At least they're going to try them. You know what I mean? Right, bro. That's totally right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I never thought of it like that. But yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Kids is more down. <laughs> yeah, they're more down. Only thing is the, the, the attention span with kids. But they'll try it. They'll, they're going to try them 100 times. A dog be like, oh, I turn to my leg. Oh, I cannot yeah. go. Oh, my abs, my stomach sore. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, nice. Yeah. But I always ask this question because I was a fan of boxing and, and MMA. But when you were coming up, who were the fighters that you kind of idolized or thought were, were like the guys you were always looking up to or thought was cool um, to watch? So in boxing, Sure, when I was when I was young in boxing, obviously like everyone's favorite. Mike, Mike Tyson was one of my favorite guys. Um, and then um, Prince Nassim Ahmed was. Bra! I can't believe you just said that. I well, like that's my favorite boxer, and every time I bring opinion. it up, bra, he that's... everybody's like, "Oh, you like him? He's a cocky fucker." I was like, "Bra, I like him. He, was he used to my come out dancing guy. and Yo. everything." That was one of my <laughs> favorite <laughs> boxers. <laughs> him and Mike Tyson were my two favorite boxers. Prince Nassim Ahmed and Mike nuts. Tyson. His son just went boxed last week, bro. Oh, where? Um, somewhere in Italy or wherever they're from. Oh yeah, he's he's not as he good pro? as him, but yeah, he he's pro. pro but oh. he he only get two fights. Like, he's coming up, but he doesn't have. He, I don't think he has it. But oh, Prince Nassim came fat, bro. Like fat, I fat. See him. He's a I see him. I see fat him. fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I see him. I see. I see. I see him on picture of him, and I was like, holy shit! Yeah, he yeah. Came- but right. um, that was my my two, and then and then in MMA, um, honestly, like I grew up watching Ron John. Like I used to, my grandpa used to bring us to the to the arena back Super Brawl days. Like I still was in high school, I still was young. I used to Ron John, Nico Vitale, um, Brada Cooper, and uh, Mark Moreno. My four Mark favorite Moreno. guys. I always like watch fighting because every <laughs> single time they fight, they would bring they would bring it and. What went really um what went really inspired me was um Uncle Ron, Ron John, how he used to he was on working he was on working man, he was on family man and the butler could scrap. So yeah. as I got older, I mean like his style, but as I got older I got to know him and I fell in love with with, with him because of who he is. Like, you yeah. know, he's he's an authentic person, he's on family man, he on working working father, husband, and that I can scrap, you know what I mean? So I mean like idolize that. Like I mean I mean I mean grow to kind of to kind of that being one of my idols and I wanted to be like him when I was I, I told him when I went to 808, I said, Oh man, this is one uncle, this is on full circle because when it started hard knock or all these all these clubs and I got here to the place that I to the guy that I I, I look up to and I wanted to be like and he was looking at me, he said he said, "You're not far away, boy. Just keep keep doing what you're doing. 
keep training hard. And um, as long as you stay in our gym, you family to me. So, you know, that stuck with me, stuck with me all the way. And, and, and still to this day, I mean, I, and he came in off a run and I love them dearly. And they always going to have one place in my heart. They, they, they took us, 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 us guys in and we never have nothing, you know, with no place for goal. They never have to take us in. There was the best gym in the state. Who's yeah, these guys yeah. coming from? They don't know. Nobody know us, you know? So, um, <laughs> yeah, they took us in and, you know, and to me, I, I think I made my name fighting, fighting out of there. Like I, I kind of, kind of got grounded fighting out of 808 and then, transitioning to Hawaii Elite, but all the guys from 808 is at Hawaii Elite, so I mean, it's yeah, all the same. Yeah. Thing, you know, so. yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, that's, that's my idols. <laughs> that's good. That's a good answer, bro. Yeah, I grew up watching Ron too. He's he, he's come to our events and yeah, they, he came to my birthday one time, him and his wife. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thanks. They're super cool. He, at one time, we was working at the mall and he was plumbing or something he's do, he's doing plumbing for something oh, over there yeah, yeah. Koran, he do all kind that guy is a workaholic he yeah he do, he's a jack of all trees that guy do everything bro <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. nuts yeah. right so in the future where do you see wait wh- by the way where is your guys gym at so our gym uh hr boxing um is uh it's in wainai it's at ricky and hannah's house in the back in the in, they kind of built the uh, they had a big backyard, so they kind of built the whole backyard out to be a gym. So it's a two level. I mean, the top side, no more nothing, but it's it's a it's it's a pretty good size. We got going full size, eighteen by eighteen ring in there, and then one smaller, oh, wow. one smaller. I would say like I don't know, eight by eight ring. So get two rings in there, oh, uh, in the back, and then lots of bags. Maybe I don't know, like fifteen bags or so, maybe. And it's it's good, it's good. So we got the they got the Bambinos class, we call it. It's uh all the kids that beginning that no more experience. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they do um they get that class going on for all, like the real beginners, and then for us every day, Monday through Friday, um, yeah, with the kids train every single day. There's no time off. So I mean, you know, it's it's uh but yeah, it's in Why Not, it's uh it's by um Lehoku Elementary in that area. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so it's kind of there, and it's a it's a private gym. So like a lot of people, Ricky and Hannah, they get so much uh, inquiries about people wanting to come to the gym, and they kind of they kind of handpick who they like come to the gym. So I mean, if anybody listening and they like come to the gym, um, I would just hit up uh, HR Boxing at, you know, on Instagram or Team Tangaro. That's the they're the two founders of the gym, and uh, you can hit them up if you wanna. You want to join her? Think you got what it takes, <laughs> bro? That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I know what to ask you. I don't. I don't know if it was you or your brother, but one time we was watching. Uh, Hopper Boy was playing semi-pro football. That was me. Yeah, he was a running back. Huh? No, I was the receiver. I was playing. Oh, Ka- thought... Hopper Boy used to play for Kailua, and yeah. I used to play for Kola Hurricanes. Yo, <laughs> so that was me. Yeah, I was. I was playing um slot. I had. Well, we had on stack team had Jason Rivers, Chad Mock, me, and uh, who's the other guy? Chaz, Chaz Ramos was the other receiver we had. But bro, we had on stack team, and then our quarterback was um Daniel Tautofi. I don't know if you remember that name. Oh yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> he used to play for UAS too, but he was our yeah. quarterback. And yeah, I know. And bro, Papa Boy was on fucking league chump. that guy? Oh, but that's good. Consistent, he'll he'll make one tackle, open field, the smallest kind of field, but yeah. he gonna make the tackle, guarantee. You run his <laughs> way, he gonna make the tackle, he gonna shut you down, now. <laughs> right, he's oh. nuts, bro. Taylor he's is nuts, nuts bro. He, he Taylor is nuts. Yeah, and, and he run his walk. mouth too. <laughs> yeah, bro, he talk shit. <laughs> Every one time, I was like, he never really talked shit to me, but I, he used yeah. to talk shit. Like he was talking shit to JC Rivers one time, and I'm. Turn back like that, and him and JC were just going into it. And JC was like, Man, I tell him, Shut the fuck up, midget. Or like, shit like that. And I was like, I, I was thinking, him, I got back in the huddle and I told JC, I said, Bro, he just went shut you down on one, one 10 yard stop route, bro. He knocked him. I go, Man, the fucking quarterback threw it. Daniel, he threw it. Shady. I go, I don't know. What are you talking about? That guy is like fucking 5'4. He says, You 6'4. He says, Shut you down. <laughs> oh, Yo. Bro. Taylor, oh, yeah. we, 
we was always watching and thinking like, oh, bro, you better not get hurt because you got a DJ later on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that guy was that guy was Dean, bro. He was yeah, Dean. He's I a game remember. bird, bro. He's, he's definitely Dean. game bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was one it was either you or your brother because I remember that the announcer. Me. See, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. And you a Niner one. fan too, huh? You went go to a couple of Niner games. I went to a Niner game, yeah, but I was an Eagle fan. Um, oh shit! I went to a Niner. <laughs> yeah, I went to a Niner game. Um, I have freaking good tickets. I went up there for work, and then one of our um vendors from work. I'd get season tickets and he wasn't there so we took his seats and bro one of that's the first time I've been to on um on game at Levi Stadium and that place is bro it that's on if anybody been never been there that's on bucket list for sure like oh, Levi yeah. Stadium is yep. hands down one of the like that place is that thing and had Tom Brady that was his last game uh last game there with the box he was he was playing oh, yep. that day yeah Christian McCaffrey and went off that game. I remember yeah. he was like nobody could stop him. And Purdy was quarterback too, huh? Yeah. Purdy was the quarterback, yeah. yeah. Nobody could stop them. And yeah, it was an was an awesome experience. Um, but the guys I was with, uh some of my co-workers and my boss, he they all Niner fans, and I was the only oh, one. Oh, I thought you as well. Oh. Yeah, I like I like the Eagles just the just that one NFC championship we lost when then hit our quarterback but oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and yeah. hop was an eagles fan and oh bro <laughs> oh, he must have been nuts you know? yeah <laughs> bro this guy he we said we stay watching like he wasn't with us we watching the game at the shack in kailua and huh? uh the fourth quarter bro this fucker show up when the score is out of control already and oh, our shit. quarterback's hurt he come over and say, hey, what's up? I'm like, bro, where you was at the beginning of the game? You wasn't sure you was going to win, you fuck it. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Should be, this year should be good, bro. You guys got Saquon now, and I yeah, think yeah. that's going to shake everything up. Yeah, but the thing, too, is, like, we always just, like, we always do good, and then, fuck, postseason, we just, shit, we just bump postseason. Yeah, Niners too, or then they end up yeah. losing to the Niners, damn Chiefs. Niners, Eagles, Cowboys is always the yeah. teams that they do good in a season, and then playoff yeah. time, it's like they go down. Then, then one random one gets in there, like the Rams or like I know, fucking, right? Uh, sick. <laughs> I like the Eagles. Uh, they're my second favorite team. Yeah. yeah, I like them when they was uh when Randall Cunningham still was there. Oh, that was back in the day. Bro, Vic Liberty. even played for them for a little yeah, bit. Vic, huh? so to me, the best duo, Vic and Deshaun Jackson, was the two best duos in that team. And Lashawn yeah. McQuaid had that was oh, the, yeah. that was the duo, the tree, yeah. the tree, the tree right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, what are your goals for the future for not only your son, but for you as a coach and what you guys got going on? Um, so for me, the, the, the goals I think for myself is just, um, just continue to learn, continue to grow, um, you know, as a coach, um, and not only a coach, but like a father figure and a mentor for these kids. And I see myself, um, not only just, you know, coaching them in, in boxing, but coaching them with life, you know, life essentials, um, not all of them going, going to turn pro and make it to a pro, but if we can leave something um, with them that can inst- that in stick with them and instill with them is that, um, you know, hard work, dedication can never be denied. And no matter what you do in life, um, we, if you get that trait, that, that traits alone will take you far in life. And I think with boxing, you know, it has a lot to do with life. You know, the discipline, like I said, the um, hard work, dedication, all of that, that, that things will transpire in life. And, and so, for me, if I can, if I can continue to just instill that in our kids going forward, um, you know, and you know, help myself also get, you know, get better, keep that. If I around that constantly, you know, going keep on constantly reminding to myself and to the kids that, you know, like hold myself accountable. Like if I let's do this together, you know, and and after you guys gone from the boxing from the club or whatever, you guys can go on to do great things in life just because you guys get that. You know that aspects that you guys can do and yeah and that's kind of the goals um and then obviously like I, the kids that's training now obviously like i, I want to help them help them become the best at what they at the best at the best boxer they can be get nas- get a lot of national titles fight international get world titles turn pro you know go up the professional ranks get get um pro titles 
Um, so it's kind of the, the goals that I have, you know, for, for some of the kids, for my son, um, and just, you know, take this thing as, as far as I can go. Like I said, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not the, I'm not the best and I'm, I'm not the best coach, but I'm going, I'm going damn near try, try to be, you know, I would try my best, work my ass off and, 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 um, give everything I got. And, and that's what I always do. You know, I, everything I do, I try to give everything I got and, and everything from my heart. And, and, you know, that's. That's all I can do, right? All right, on. Well, yeah, that's yeah. good goals, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, social media wise, where can people find you and your guys' um, gym? Yeah, so social media for uh, HR Boxing. Uh, like I said earlier, um, they can go just HR Boxing on Instagram, HR the Boxing, and then um, and then the other one is Team Tangaro. Um, just just real self-explanatory, and then for me, um. My Instagram is a underscore b underscore piper. Um, yeah, if you guys get any questions, you guys can anything about the gym. You guys can hit hit up Ricky or Hanna. Um, anything else, you know, like event wise or whatever, you can hit up any one of us. Um, or if you just like, I don't know, heard something on here, you like say something, DM yeah. me. <laughs> right on <laughs> and for us you can find us at above the bridge podcast on instagram youtube our website's atbpod.com and my instagram's daddy daddy hi oh bro i could rap with you for not a three hours i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no, it was good man i i fuck, i really enjoyed this uh in, enjoyed talking story and kind of reminiscing about the past i never Shit, I never really thought of it. Like, it just hit me now. Like, holy shit, I'm freaking old, bro. Like, 38 now. And like, holy shit, like, I've been in the game for a long time. And like, yeah. like all of us, like, I mean, like, thinking about it, like, we, shit, we never really think of it back then. Now you, we, we older now. It's like, like, you've been fucking promoting for uh, forever, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I remember I was like, I remember the first time I seen you, I was like, Charles, I, I forget what we, I think it was, I, I want to say level four, bro. Oh, yeah. He <laughs> was promoting over there with, with um, what is that guy's name? The Japanese guy, the side phone guy. He was kind of oh, running that. Um, I know now. who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, Al Alvin, Alvin. Alvin. Alvin, yeah, Alvin yeah, Ye. Yeah. Alvin yeah. Ye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the first time. Like, Dude, that's like, fuck, back in like 2008. Huh? Oh, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> but yeah i mean like good times man good times um, yeah. yeah well your body of work is something to be proud of and like you said your your sons can watch what you did and and be proud you know what i mean like uh, yeah that's 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 cool you walk it like you talk it and everything you I ask the, yeah I, I, everything you ask your your kids to do in training it's, it ain't something you never did. So it's like they, they got to believe in you, bro. It's, they yeah. say um, those who can't teach, but what they're going to teach if they don't know how to do them. You, know, you, you yeah, walk yeah. the walk, bro. There's nothing that can that's duplicate true. that. <laughs> right on, bro. Yeah. We'll shock us for the cameras. Thank you, guys, bro. Tune it in. <laughs> Right on, we out. Shout out Artist Group Network. Aloha, brah. Yeah, she did, brah. <laughs> <laughs>